The next great friend here in skincare exosomes. No, this is not a recruitment video for my new cult, although more on that to come, but rather today we are going to be talking about exosomes. Why do they coming up in topics of conversation around skincare, rejuvenation, and hair restoration? Several months ago, I did a video reacting to Brian Johnson. Well, I have several videos at this point reacting to him. If you're not familiar, Brian Johnson pursues various anti-aging regimens, if you will, in an effort to turn back the clock, one of which is, or at least at the time, was exosomes. And I did a video commenting briefly on exosomes, but let's go a little bit deeper. What exactly are exosomes? Exosomes are produced by cells throughout the body. They're little vesicles. A vesicle is a membrane bound sac essentially. And these vesicles contain very important cargo, things like growth factors, proteins, lipids, microRNA. They're produced by cells and they bind receptors on other cells to influence a variety of cell outcomes, cell behaviors, not just in your skin, but but in pretty much any organ system throughout your body. They're essentially a method of cell-cell communication. In the skin, they play a key role in influencing things like cell maturation, differentiation, blood vessel growth, as well as inflammation. Now, truthfully, they are a very active and ongoing area of research because they are of interest for a variety of biomedical applications, including in dermatology. As you can imagine, because they play such a role in influencing inflammation, and our immune responses, well, they're a very attractive candidate as a therapeutic for a variety of different, well, inflammatory skin conditions like acne, acne scarring, atopic dermatitis, rosacea, you name it, people are interested in exosomes. There's also a lot of enthusiasm for trying to figure out how best to take advantage of exosomes for potentially augmenting healing from surgery and for reconstructive surgeries. As you can imagine, exosomes, because they positively influence blood vessel growth, inflammation, and regeneration, well, why can't we throw some of those onto a healing skin graft? make it heal faster potentially. So these are all really intriguing, compelling reasons to be excited about exosomes. Furthermore, because it can have a positive influence on regenerative pathways, well, they may augment the outcomes and results that you get with various cosmetic procedures, such as laser treatments or microneedling. You can imagine microneedling plus exosomes, and maybe you get better results compared to microneedling alone. In fact, there's even a small, small limited clinical study showing that when it comes to treating acne scars, uh, you could treat acne scars with a laser or you could treat acne scars with a laser plus exosomes and you get better results when the exosomes are on board. Now, how long those results are maintained? Who knows? Very small study, more research is needed. That's gonna be the theme of this video. More research is needed because while we do have a few here and there small limited clinical studies, the vast, the vast majority of research on exosomes exosomes is preclinical. Preclinical studies are things like looking at cells in a dish or small animal models. A lot of the research is showing really, really promising results. So to the general public, that might sound like, okay, great, where do I sign up? Preclinical studies can tell a story that ends up being very, very different in reality in real world human use. Not to mention there are so many gaps in knowledge when it comes to the use of exosomes in skincare and in hair care. What is the best source? What is the best delivery system? And not everything that happens naturally in our body is something that is as straightforward to reproduce exogenously. Meaning, yes, a particular exosome may be produced by the skin cells to lead to a specific outcome, but is it as simple as sprinkling that exact exosome or one very similar to it on the skin and also getting the same outcome? Or does it have to be there at the right time the right place and with other things alongside it in order for it to have a positive impact. Furthermore, could there be negative outcomes with using exosomes? Calming down inflammation in a certain way is not actually always ideal. Your body does need some inflammation going on. If you completely eliminate all inflammation, leaves you very
very weak, so to speak, um, and actually can jeopardize healing pathways. So we need to figure out the right time, the right place, and the right parameters in order to really know how using exosomes could benefit our skin in reality. As it stands now, most of what we have is preclinical, so not enough to really say for sure if it's going to be useful to you. But that does not stop the cosmetic industry from going ahead and taking advantage of these ingredients and claims around these ingredients. I mean, if you can market a serum as containing the next great breakthrough in science and skincare, well, that right there will sell products if the science is most compelling in a skin cell in a dish, but has never really been applied in this setting to human skin to use. So it doesn't matter. Where do they come from? Most of the synthetic exosomes are coming from platelets, mesenchymal cells, but it's really a loosely regulated industry as it stands now. So I would exercise caution with regards to the use of exosomes. Your skin cells communicate with exosomes, but is it enough to just sprinkle them onto the skin? Do they even get in? What is the best delivery system? Can they be used with other ingredients? Could they be compromised? Could their stability be jeopardized by the use of ingredients? Do they need to be delivered by a laser or with micro needling to introduce some sort of channel directly into the skin? What is the optimal storage conditions for skincare products that contain exosomes? If someone has a pre-skin cancer on their face and they apply an exosome to it, will it help the cancer or is it going to promote the skin cancer development? Are the exosomes in the product even relevant to skin in the first place? Because there are so many unanswered questions in terms of exosomes, I think at best they are just sort of smoke and mirrors, but at worst, in theory, they could potentially be bad for your skin. More research is needed and actual human volunteers, actual clinical studies on people. Additionally, there's also the possibility that while these ingredients may be very helpful, they may be only helpful to certain individuals in certain situations. Maybe they're super helpful for treating specific skin conditions, but for someone who is otherwise healthy and doesn't have an active skin issue going on, they may be totally unnecessary and futile. I find it surprising actually that they are being so heavily touted as like the next great thing in the skincare space when there is so little, if any, I mean, there is some, but so little in general research to inform formulation, delivery, and to guide what outcomes one might actually be able to expect from a research-backed perspective, not just in cells in a dish or animal models, but in actual human volunteers. I cannot emphasize this enough. So often in medicine, things that are really, really exciting in preclinical models just end up being a total disaster in real world human use. Like they don't end up translating to human beings. That's why we have preclinical science. Preclinical research is meant to inform and guide clinical research. You don't jump from preclinical straight to using in humans. It's meant to guide the actual translational studies. The does this translate to human use? And if so, how should it be delivered? What dosage? What form? These are important questions, but already a lot of people are touting the benefits of these in skincare. And also you may even encounter people injecting these. In my opinion, it's very premature. What about for hair growth? You know, there's some recent clinical studies looking at exosomes for scalp and hair growth that are, again, promising, but still very early. So at the end of the day, I personally think that we need more research. It's kind of like if I handed you a plastic grocery bag filled with groceries and said, this should feed you. And you're like, great. So you take the grocery bag home, you take it into your kitchen, you open it up. But the only thing that is in there is like mop cleaner and um, a lip balm. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? It's not gonna feed me. So that kind of context is really important. Or I can hand you a grocery bag and be like, all right, this is what you're gonna use to make dinner tonight. You could open it up and all that's in there is garlic, onions, and like some ketchup. And you're like, okay, these are maybe ingredients, but I need other things in order to make the meal. Um, same holds true with exosomes, you know. Uh, yes, this exosome may be something that is ingredients and in getting a 
given response, but is it actually going to give the response in the absence of some other things that are missing? Probably not. Or to take the analogy even further, I could tell you I have a bag of groceries for you and it's got everything in it that you could ever need to make dinner tonight. You're like, great, where do I pick it up? Then all of a sudden I disappear, <laughs> meaning you have no way to get the grocery bag. And the same can hold true for your skin. Great, you have this exosome that is well established to be produced by a skin cell and to lead to this outcome in another skin cell, but it's not getting into the skin because the formulation is not correct. Why? Well, because we haven't established really the ideal formulation for delivery. The other scenario, I have a bag of groceries that contains everything in it you're gonna need to make dinner tonight. Great, wonderful, can't wait to receive it. But I take that bag of groceries and I take it to the wrong house. So you don't have the bag of groceries you need to make dinner. Your neighbor does, your neighbor's out of town and the groceries are just gonna spoil on their front porch because it's 110 degrees out. Hello, Texas. Um, although now we've got a cold snap coming through, so <laughs> keeps you guessing. Anyway, I digress. Hopefully you understand at this point that there's just so much we don't know about exosomes when it comes to rejuvenation, skincare, hair care, etc. that I just find it perplexing that they are being touted as being so beneficial when it's like, yeah, I mean, sure, they are super beneficial, but there's this huge gap in knowledge with regards to how, when, where, and why that I would not go chasing after exosomes. For me personally, I would not recommend them to anyone. Uh, I think they are just too too early, too early to, to really give you any anything. All right, guys, that's what I wanted to say for today's video. Let me know what you're gonna make for dinner tonight. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. On the end slate, I'm going to put one of my Brian Johnson reaction videos. So check that one out next if you have been wondering about some of the other popular anti-aging regimens out there. But if you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.